You're known as a big party guy in wrestling. Do you consider yourself a drug addict? Well, I'll be honest with you, Eric. Uh, all country I was, I was, I was married to the wrestling mat. And my love was a pretty solid Greco Roman. I come to the University of Minnesota, and still I was married to the wrestling. And uh, my team five years champion, myself three times champion AAU, and coach of University of Minnesota, Dan Gable, Greg Solomon America from Iowa, I was his teacher, John Peterson, Ben Peterson, Gary Alexander, and uh, Minnesota Wrestling Club, Mr. Alan Rice, head coach, I was his assistant. Like I said, uh, uh, that days, I didn't do any drugs because I really was number one. My major was wrestling and sport. So I get that gold medal and then I turn pro. And uh, pro is completely different than amateur and Olympic game. I used to travel with the Greg the Hammer, Bob Wharton Jr., Roddy Roddy Piper, and a lot of American boys. Uh, and I tried to be sociable on the car with them, or make the long trip short. I didn't say I didn't use marijuana. I didn't say I didn't use drugs. I did, but uh, with moderation. And, uh, but I was too, too smart to whatever I make, to I spend for the drugs. Uh, and my drugs was only $40 a week for my marijuana. And once when all days, uh, Hulk Hogan, or uh, God bless him, another friend I had, JYD, Junker Dad, taking me a little bit testosterone or DACA, because I was a small, I was only 175 pounds, I come pro. And my coach, Mr. Burgani, I told me, Kaz, and my real name is Khosrow, and uh, short they call me Kaz. And uh, Mr. Burgani, I told me, Kaz, if you want to get a little bit uh, you want to come pro, you want to be champion, you have to be from 175 pounds, at least 220, which is I did. I didn't say I didn't use DACA or testosterone all days. God bless my friend JYD. He was south working for Bell Watts or Georgia. And uh, I did. I did a little bit DACA, I did a little bit testosterone. And I'm traveling with the Bob Wharton or Roddy Roddy Piper or whatever Hulk Hogan or Soldier. I mean, not Soldier. Soldier was the all killing and all American. But uh, Hulk Hogan and um, uh, Roddy Roddy Piper, Bob Wharton, especially Greg the Hammer. They was my uh, number one uh, friend. I used to travel with them, and they smoke. They get high, and uh, and first I said no to them. But they, and then they tell me, shit, Olympic is over. Now you are one of the boys. And, uh, and uh, make, if you want to make the long trip short, have a cup of cold beer with us. Have a little bit of smoke marijuana. Have a little bit this, have a little bit that. And I want to be sociable. I did it. I don't say no. But my, uh, one of my very good friends, God bless him, Mr. Chief Strongbo, told me, shit, Forget about all that you want to tell you, uh, yeah, be sociable or uh, have a little bit uh, during how You don't pay for your do. You're the real Olympic athlete. Don't listen to that all that you uh, uh, to you be sociable. Uh, that's not your stuff. But uh, like I said, I did. I didn't say I didn't. But I had the moderation once to well, Marijuana, once you were whatever DACA, once you were whatever coming hard stuff, I did. I don't say I did this. Speaking of the drugs, what, I mean, you, you mentioned marijuana. What other, like, what, what other drugs have you taken? What other kind of hard stuff have you taken? Like I said, DACA, that day was a DACA. Or DACA right. That's steroids, right? Right, right. right. So I get a little bit bigger to so be from 175 to so be 220. I did it, and that work and training. All my life, very hard training with uh, Paul Underup in Georgia. We used to go training together, 500 pound squat, 
three to five hundred pounds with the shrugs and shoulder work and work very heavy. And my uh, training partner in the team was uh, Mr. Wonderful, Paul Andro, yeah. my neighbor. But, uh, and, uh, and uh, Paul Andro, tough man and a strong man. Tell him about that uh, Vader story real quick. Tell us the Vader story real quick. The Vader story, I, I was there that day and uh, Mr. Wonderful Paul Andro was the agents and, uh, and uh, when Vader was an uh, employee for the WCW and I was over there that day to probably I can uh, go and be employed for the WCW and a little guy come tell Van Vader they need him for an interview but Van Vader tell that he was talking to the, the man punch his face, what do you call him, a stink? A stink? Yes. What? You know what I'm talking about? The punch his face and a... Sting! A sting, right, I can't say that. They was talking together and then little guy come tell the uh, big man um, Big man uh, Van Vader they need him for an interview. And uh, the big man tell the little guy, I'm not ready and I'm not gonna be ready for a long time. And the man is on the contract for half a billion dollars. He shouldn't be on time, he shouldn't be ready. So anyway, finally my neighbor Mr. Paul Onro, uh, he just did the job and uh, uh, that time Kevin Sullivan was on the charge, Eric Bishop and uh, and then uh, Jean Min was there, and then they send the, uh, they send the, they send the Mr. Wonderful, uh, Paul Andro, come to tell Van Vader, what the hell, man, we need you for interview. The only thing is that, what the hell, man, we need you for interview, move, get, come out. And then a big man gets up, and a big man gets up, uh, uh, and he bat mouth Paul Andro, because Paul Andro, uh, and for, uh, four or five minutes and I was watching him and uh, that day is Haku was in that locker room myself and Dickie Slater and some another um, uh, big name. So anyway, I'll make the long story short. The big man, Mr. Van Vader, uh, he cost Paul on the road very, very, very bad and apparently Mr. Uh, I mean, big man, he threw the first punch and hit the Paul under of his leg. Paul fell down. After Paul fell down, and a strength come from heart. And a German man, Paul under of, even is like me handicapped with one arm because one arm nerve problem. And he gets up after uh, he threw he tr his throat. A cop short to walk with down and, um, and he gets up one punch, two punch, three punch, pull the big man all over to the wall and he get a double leg, take him down, after he take him down, one, two, three, kick bare feet, hit his nose and tea. The big man he didn't get up, his head go down. <coughs> and then after that myself and Haku and Dicky slider and we pushed Paul over. Uh, and then I said, Paul, you don't want to kill the man. Enough, baby. Uh, and then the big man, he crawl, and he get up, and he go back in center of stage. We have three locker rooms, and he go back, sit in that last locker room, and they put ice in his nose and the tea. And then finally, he come back again, that the first locker room, Jody Hamilton, have a TV camera to we watch the we watched the match from that room. And then again, Mr. Van Vader come, and he sucker punch again in Paul, and he wants to fight with Paul back again. And then by the, it was too late, and then we stopped them. But that time, Mr. Eric Bishop come, to tell him, hey man, you have to go. And uh, that was, a, that was a, one of the toughest, one of the, uh, one of the vicious fight uh, in the locker room of the, professional wrestling many years I'm around the world. That was a very, very tough and a, a very, what I call, a, very tough fighting in the locker room. Shoot, but the, yeah. huh? shoot, shoot, shoot 